Hey everybody, this is Paul. In this video, I'm going to be explaining the difference between pass by value, pass by reference, and pass by pointer in a C++ function call. So here on the right hand side, I've got a bash terminal open. And if I type ls, enter, it shows me that inside of this folder that the shell is controlling, I've got this file called passby.cpp, and that is this file right here that I've got open up. So in this file, we're going to be writing the code so that we can evaluate the difference between passby value, passby reference, and passby pointer. So let's go ahead and start writing some code. For this tutorial, I'm just going to need one library. So I'll go ahead and include that at the top. And the library I'm going to use for this one is standard io.h. Let's go ahead and make some function prototypes. So the first function prototype is not going to return anything, so we'll give it a return type of void. Then we'll call this function pass by val, and that with a semicolon. And we're just going to be passing in an integer variable, and we'll name the integer variable that we pass in val for value. So when we create a function with this signature, what we're saying here is that we're actually passing in a copy of the integer that goes into this function. We'll see how that works in a second. Next, let's create a function prototype for the pass by reference function. So let's go ahead and copy this line. We'll paste it below. We're going to call this one pass by ref or pass by reference. And to pass something by reference, we simply just throw an ampersand in here. So there's a few different ways you can do this. You can leave it like this. If you really wanted to, you could put the ampersand over here, or you could put the ampersand over there. All three of those mean the exact same thing. We're passing this integer value by reference. And so let's go ahead and change the name of this to ref to make it a little bit more clear which one this is. So when we set up a signature like this, what we're saying is pass in the actual variable. In the pass by value here, we were passing in a copy of the variable by doing this signature. This signature says pass in the actual variable. So let's do one more here. So why don't we just go ahead and copy this line, go down to the next line there, we'll paste it, and this time we'll change it to pass by PTR for pass by pointer. And it doesn't make sense to have this called reference. Let's go ahead and make this PTR for pointer. And since we're passing it by pointer, we actually need the asterisk. And once again, we can leave it like this to pass in a integer pointer into our function. Or if we wanted to, we could move this over here. Or it works just the same if we move it over like that as well. All three of those mean the exact same thing. So the next thing we'll do is we'll create our main function. The main function returns an integer variable. It's obviously called main. And for the sake of this tutorial, I don't need any arguments in main. Let's go ahead and just do an open and close and curly brace. And at the end, we'll return a value of zero for a successful completion. So now let's go ahead and copy these function prototypes here. And below the main function, we'll define their behavior. So I'll paste them down here. Now I'll replace the semicolon on the end of all of these by an opening and closing curly brace. Okay, that looks good. So let's go ahead and define the pass by value function. So remember the pass by value is just passing in a copy of the integer that we provide it. So just to demonstrate that, set this value to 10, and we'll have the value we pass in be something different than 10 in, in the main program. And then right after we do that, we're going to print the value. So we'll call the printf function. So print f, and then we pass in a string. We're going to say val equals, and then we'll say percent i, which means we're going to provide the string with an integer variable. And then we'll do a backslash n for a new line. We'll do a comma after the quote. Right after the comma, we need to tell the printf function what integer variable we want to show up in this part of the string. And we want to print this guy right here. So we'll see that it prints value equals 10 is what we should see. For the percent i, we want that to be the val variable, which should be equal to 10. Okay, so that's pretty simple. We'll pass in some value, we'll set that value to 10, and we'll see that it's equal to 10 within the function. So for the pass by reference, we'll just set the thing that we pass in equal to 20. Go ahead and copy this guy right here. And for this case, we're going to print ref equals, and it should equal 20. 
but we need to instruct it that we're actually going to be printing ref. So it should say ref equals 20, and that'll get called within this function. So now let's do the pass by pointer. The pass by pointer is going to be a little bit different. The pointer actually points to an integer. So we're going to have to make this pointer point to an integer in our main program. And then to get the value, we actually have to dereference it by saying star ptr. This says dereference the pointer that we passed in or look at the value that this pointer is pointing to. Or in this case, we're going to say the value that this pointer is pointing to is equal to the value 30. So whatever this guy that we pass in is pointing to, we're saying set the value of the thing you're pointing to to the value of 30. And then we'll go ahead and just print that real quick, just like we did the others. So we'll copy that right there, paste it here. And this time we want to know the dereferenced value of PTR, the thing that PTR is pointing to, and then we need to tell it where that value is located. Well, the value is located inside the variable that PTR is pointing to. All right, let's jump back up to our main program here, and let's create an integer variable that we can use to pass into these functions. We'll create an integer variable called x, and we'll set that equal to five. And then immediately after that, we'll print the value of x, print f, say x equals, and we'll do percent i, saying that we want a placeholder for an integer variable here. We'll put a new line character in there, after the quote, a comma, and then we instruct the printf function what variable we want to be displayed right here. And we want the variable x, which should have the value five. So we'll put x right there. So we'll see the first thing printed in our program is the x equals five is what we should see. Then we'll go ahead and pass x into our pass by value function. So we'll do that by saying pass by value and we'll just pass x right in. Immediately after that, we'll go ahead and print x again. So we'll copy this line and we'll print x one more time. And in this case, we should still see that x equals five, since when we pass by value, we actually are only passing a copy of x in. The next thing we're going to do, we'll call pass by reference. And once again, we simply pass x right in. So because pass by reference, we've added this ampersand here, we're instructing the pass by reference function to actually take the variable itself that we pass in and manipulate that. So when we call this function, we should see the reference was set to 20, and that will print right here, reference equals 20. And then immediately after that, we'll go ahead and copy this print function, and we'll display what the value of x is in main. So why don't we stop there and go ahead and print the results. Going back to the terminal here, let's go ahead and clear the screen, and we'll go ahead and compile this as C++ code by saying G++, and then the name of the file that we want to compile into an executable. And so that name is right here, passby.cpp, passby, and then if I just push tab, it'll auto-complete for me. And then I'll do a minus O. This is what I'm going to name the executable that I'm making, and we'll just name it passby. And we better make sure our file is saved, so go back to here, I'll save the file, and then I'll push enter. And when it drops down to the next line, that implies there wasn't any errors or warnings, so I'll just say ls, and we should see this new passby executable. So that guy is right there. We can run the program now by saying dot forward slash pass by and we see the results so x equals five here we set x equal to five so the x equal five is coming from this message so we're printing x equals and then whatever value is in the x variable gets printed so x equals five that's what we would expect then we call the pass by value function the pass by value function prints the value is equal to 10 because we set it to 10 in the pass by value function. But remember, when we do pass by value, the thing we pass in is just a copy. Immediately after we call the pass by value function, we print the value of x again, and we see that x is unchanged. It's still equal to five because we just passed in a copy. The next thing we do is we call the pass by reference function. And here we see ref equals 20. So that's coming from this print statement within the pass by reference function. So it's saying the thing you passed in got set to 20, but because pass by reference, we're actually passing in the variable itself. When pass by reference finishes, we immediately print the value of x, and we see that x has changed to the value of 20 that was set in the pass by reference function. So that's pretty cool. So now let's take a look at the pass by pointer. First, I'll clear the terminal, and let's go ahead and get rid of this so that way we can just focus on the pass by pointer. 
pass by pointer is essentially going to do the same thing as pass by reference, but the syntax is going to be a little bit different. And I should probably make a video on the difference between pass by pointer and pass by pointer reference. I'll save that for another video, but that's another topic we can talk about later. But let's keep this variable. We have an integer variable called x. We'll leave it set to 5. And now let's create an integer pointer. So we'll just say int star for integer pointer. And we'll call this integer pointer x ptr. And we're going to make this pointer point to x. So basically pointers hold addresses. And so if we want it to point to this variable, we need to actually make it the address of that variable. So x ptr is now pointing to x. So now let's go down a line and we'll call the pass by pointer function. And in this case, we just need to pass in an integer pointer as we see down here. And we have an integer pointer right here called x ptr. So we're going to pass in x ptr. And then we'll want to see the value being pointed to by x ptr both before and after. So let's go ahead and code that up real quick. So before we do the call, let's go ahead and print the value of x itself. So we'll say x equals percent i. We're going to be putting an integer value there. We'll do a new line, end quote, comma, the variable that we want to be printed at the percent i location, which in this case is just x and that with a semicolon. And let's go ahead and do the same thing. But for this time, we want to look at the, the referenced value of x ptr. And we'll pass that in here as the thing to be placed in this location with the percent i as well. So remember what this is saying by putting the asterisk in front of the integer pointer is we're saying, show us the value of the thing you're pointing to. So we're pointing to the variable x, so the thing inside that is going to be a five. So we should see that x equals five, and we should see that the dereference value of our x pointer also equals the value five, because x ptr is pointing to x, which has the value five. So right after the pass by pointer call, we'll go ahead and print both of these again for clarity. And I'll paste that there. We'll go ahead and save this file. So to compile this, I'll just do G++ once again, the name of the file I want to compile, which is passby.cpp. And we're going to once again name the executable passby. I'll push enter. It drops down to the next line, which tells me things compiled just fine. Now let's run the program, dot slash passby, enter. Okay, now let's take a look at the results. The first thing we see is x equals five. In the main program, we set x equal to five. We create a pointer and we point it to x. Then we print the value of x, which is what we see here, x equals five, which is what we would expect. Next, we print the dereference value of our x pointer, and we see that it is pointing to an integer variable with a value five, which is what we would expect because it's pointing to x and x holds five in it. Then the next thing we see comes from this pass by pointer call. We pass in the pointer and we see the dereference value of ptr is 30. So that comes from within the function pass by pointer. So the thing that was passed in is ptr, but we pass in x ptr. So x ptr is essentially the same thing as ptr in this case. The value in the variable that the thing we pass in is pointing to, we're going to make that value 30. And so we see that within the function, we set that value to 30, which is what we see right here. The dereference value of PTR is 30, which essentially is, this, is really the same thing as the dereference value of X pointer because that's what we passed in here. Then immediately after that, we see that X equals 30. That comes from right here. So X itself got changed to 30. And we can also see that the thing that X pointer is now pointing to is equal to 30. So really, all three of these are really the exact same thing. They're all referring to the value that's stored within x here. This one right here just shows what it looks like when we're in the pass by pointer function call. This one shows what it looks like in respect to x after the pass by pointer call. And this one shows what it looks like in terms of dereferencing the x pointer after the pass by pointer call. So anyway, that's the difference between pass by value pass by reference, and pass by pointer. Thank you guys for watching. Have an excellent day. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to subscribe.